All right, save your audible gasps. I'm going to reveal something. In high school, I was not a jock. <laughs> but I certainly wanted to fit in. And everyone knows that the easiest way to fit in, if we've learned nothing from Glee, <laughs> is to be a jock. <laughs> so this was my high school dream. To not only be marginally allowed at the various tables in the cafeteria, but someday actually get invited to sit at one and hopefully the jock table. Um, not naturally gifted with athletic prowess, I wound up just focusing on something jock-like, which would be to secure myself a letterman's jacket. <laughs> For if I had a letterman's jacket, that's just as good. And I could proudly walk through the halls of Valley High School circa 1982 and rightfully take my place at whatever fucking table I want in the cafeteria. So, who gives letters out? Sports, 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 sports. Something called varsity quiz. That sounds up my alley. What's this all about, friends? You got to know useless trivia. Hello. <laughs> Show tunes works. I'm not gay, but I'm willing to learn. Here we go. <laughs> so I, I tried out as a sophomore, 10th grade, uh, to at the Valley High School varsity quiz team and barely secured myself a spot on this team. So I'm on the varsity quiz squad, and our advisor is a lovely, lovely woman named Judith Grenice. Now, Judith Grenice was known around the school as the Bat Lady because back in the 80s, she had bat tattoos and vampire tattoos. She was Twilight before Twilight was Twilight, baby. <laughs> she didn't really like me. I don't know that she hated me yet, but, you know, she let me on the team. And there I was, dutifully practicing with the squad all the time. And uh, we had the, our leader was this fellow named David Shields. He was a genius. And he was, you know, the captain, and he got to pick out, the captain got to pick out the, the team t-shirts. It was this sort of white poly with this scarlet red collar, and I got to wear my varsity quiz shirt. Not the equivalent of a letterman jacket walking through the halls of Valley High. Not. <laughs> not. But I knew that at the end of the year, if we all did really, really well, everyone has to get a letter. So I'm going to get my letter, and I'm going to get my letterman's jacket. So we go all year long, and we're basically undefeated. Um, we go to all the different things. We're, we're beating Chaparral. We're beating Gorman. Gorman, yeah, Gorman. We're beating everybody. And we make it to the state finals of varsity quiz. And it's exactly what you think it would be. It's literally four people lined up on one with the little buzzers, and then four on the other side. And then there was this guy named Bob Amblatt. Was that his name? How did that come to me? Bob Amblatt. <laughs> And it was telecast on Channel 10, all right? So there would be is like, on my left, we have the squad from Valley High, and they'd all denounce them, you know, David Shields, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then the squad from whoever we played in the state championship. Now, I had never played in an actual match because Ms. Grenice never thought that I was kind of ready for prime time. And my role was basically, in my mind at least, to provide the comic relief when no one could come up with the answer. So who was the, you know, eighth first lady of, you know, Dolly Madison Donut Gems? Bing! You know. Uh, I really enjoyed myself in high school, and no one else did, which is why I need a letterman's jacket. Here we go. So we get to the end. We win the state championship. We have a ceremony. They hand out the patch for what? The letterman jacket. And then they hand out the big V, which normally someone wouldn't want to wear going through high school, but this was Valley Viking V, not, okay. So, you know, V, where, no. Okay, so I'm at the ceremony and everyone gets their state patch because we're all on the team, so I got my state patch. And then they hand out the letters and everyone gets a letter who performed in, or who played in at least one game. That was the new rule. The new rule? Are you kidding me? I don't get a letter because you didn't put me in a game. I was ready, coach, I was ready. This is when my mom got involved. I like to think that I'm a pretty good advocate for my clients, murderers, 
rapists. <laughs> there will never be a better advocate for a better client than Miss Barbara Jean Figler. <laughs> and she went to the vice principal. And she went to the principal. And she went to the school board and she kept going and going to no avail. You are denied. You will not get a letter. You will not be able to wear a letterman's jacket. So, great consternation. She tried, but she wasn't gonna give up. She was plotting, plotting her way. <laughs> and this was a lot of tension in the Figler household because she just wanted little baby David to be happy. <laughs> now, I know you see before you a fairly large, hulking, buffed out man. In high school, I was really small. And I wanted that jacket more than all. So the next day, I'm sitting in, we had a class. And this was kind of the crowd that I hung out with. Um, it was sort of the smarty kids. But again, no go in the, in the cafeteria. Um, they had their own weird diversions and, and their own little cult of the smarty kids, which was great. But even they didn't really want me around. I mean, I was really a man without, without a mission. And so um, I'm sitting in my 10th grade English class, which Miss Grenice also taught. And I don't know if I had just seen the movie Scanners or what was going on, but somehow I thought to myself, if I could just burn the message into her head, she would see the light and award me the letter. So I'm staring at her. And then I see like a little bat sneaking out of one of the sleeves. I focus on the bat. And I just start focusing and focusing. And then all of a sudden this, this feeling that I didn't know was in me was just pure anger. And that supplanted any other plan that I might have. And I'm just staring at Judy Grenice, just staring at her. The paramedics told me when I came around that I had an event. Now, I don't know if I faked this. I don't know if this was just this subconscious thing that happened or if there really was an event. But this was the ammunition that Barbara Jane Figler needed. The next day, a letter was awarded. Okay. We didn't exactly have the money, though, for a letterman's jacket. And all the other kids told me, dude, if you walk around with that bullshit varsity quiz letter on your jacket, you're gonna get killed. You need to have a sport of some sort. For the next two years in high school, I went out for every team just to make a team, any team, so I could put the name of that team on my theoretical future, save me and make me a hero in my school letterman jacket. I didn't have the knees or the feet, or the eye-hand coordination. I mean, basically, I'm a Jew, please. I'm five foot tall. I'm good at pushing the button. So, finally, there's an opening on the junior varsity wrestling squad. And I talked to Coach Northridge, and he looks me up and down and says, how much do you weigh? 98. You're on the team. They didn't have anyone to fill the JV spot. I won my first three matches because none of the other schools had somebody in that weight class. At the same time, I went out for theater and I got on theater, which they all called themselves thespians, which I thought was so cool because it sounded like lesbians, so that was awesome. My first actual match in JV wrestling, I was up, I was five foot tall. I was up against a kid who was the same exact weight, four foot seven. This kid was a friggin' fire plug. And I already remember it being in the gym, Michael Jackson music was playing in the back, and the kid just looked at me and salivating, just like, you're so going down. I scored two points in that match, each for escape, which was my natural instinct. Get the fuck away from me, point, yes, back down. Get the fuck away from me, point. I quit immediately after that, having earned my stripe as a JV wrestler. My mom, over the two years, because now I'm a senior, took me down to Bees Taylor, where I went and purchased 
the Letterman jacket, sewed it on, sewed on the state patch, wrestling on the side, underneath, the guy said, we couldn't afford the big Valley Viking on the back because that patch was fucking very expensive, so it just says Valley Viking. He said, what's your sports nickname? I don't have a sports nickname. Everyone calls me David, if they even talk to me. I'm not Skipper or Chief or Tiger or something. I went to school with Greg fucking Maddox. He, he's Tiger. I'm nothing. He goes, I need to have a nickname. I wrote Dave. I wanted to be Dave. I walked through the halls of Valley Highs once, and that was the day for yearbook pictures. So in all my yearbook pictures, I'm wearing this Letterman jacket that's five sizes too fucking big for this little guy. like a glove.